Hey, what's good? Hey, what's good? It's your girl, Rena the Great. Back with another story time. I don't vlog, but I guess people are who's doing story time still calling it Vlogtober. So I'm on my Vlogtober-ish, trying to do every day. Um, but so, hey, welcome. If you're new, then please go check out the old story so you can be caught up and know what's going on. But don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, leave a comment, share the video, and yeah. Also, I just want to say that for my sake, my business, I'm not saying any names and keeping this confidential for a reason. But if you guys want to read comments and do what you do and... I'm going to just say that because people are messy, okay? But hey, hi, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so during this time when we're pretty much living together, it wasn't very long because it wasn't very long till I absolutely had to not let him back in the house. And I'm going to get there. But there's some like key parts or there's some big things that happened um, before we got to that point, right? So, um, okay, so like I said, we're living together. It's extremely toxic. I would even make him sleep outside sometimes because he wouldn't come home when I would want. I would lock the gate, do all that. So that was already... That would also piss him off. Like, ooh, I might insert some voicemails. Let me just tell you something before I leave a fucking voice message to only one fucking song and do shit like that. Hey, you a real cold piece of work, my nigga. You pathetic. You don't fucking lie to me, my nigga. You know what I need to fucking help me? I'm fucking homeless, nigga. I don't have shit. You don't have a kid. You don't have shit, nigga. And I'm almost close to getting fucking fired, nigga. You're not coming on time to check other people. And you don't do shit to me. It's like that bitch. You just like the rest of them, nigga. Sort of down. They don't fuck out. You're super fucking hard. You don't fuck out. You don't fuck out. You don't fuck out. You don't fuck out. You Bitch, you knew the fuck I was going to. From the nights when I did that, because that would make him irate. So he would have just bullied his way back in every time because I'm telling you, he was doing like, he was insane. He was, or is, he is, he's insane. But so another thing that he would do that I hated is he would always put me on D&D. &D and I'm like, okay, you're giving yourself up. Like, clearly you're out here messing with other hoes. Like... Why are you putting me on D and D? I'm not dumb, you know. And then I'll be like, "Don't block me, da da da." And he's like, "I'm not blocking you." And really, I meant the D and D thing, but it took me a while to figure that out because I don't do that to people. So I'm not, I don't, not a sneaky cheater. Like I didn't know about the D and D trick, you know. <laughs> so, um, because you can put certain people on D and D, and uh, it's just a whole bunch. So he used to do that to me a lot, right? So I'm, the same day when we had to go pick up that baby. Also, I want to make it clear that I was not trying to have a relationship with this child. Not because I'm like, Ugh, that terrible baby. Uh -uh. No, I would never treat a child like that. But because I'm just like, I don't know if the mom is aware and I have a child. So it's like, I would tell him, I'm like, nah, you got to like, you got to talk to her about that. Like, and he'll be like, she knows, she knows. Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, oh, like. I don't know, it just seemed, it was just tricky. You know, I, I'm just like, I wanna be around the baby cause it's like, I wanna show you like, I love you and support you and stuff. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm not trying to cross any lines or step on anybody's toes. Like, but he would literally be like, like even FaceTime, like literally FaceTime and be like, put him in, in the FaceTime and be like, here, talk to him. And I'll be like, dude, like when we would argue and I'll be like, bruh, stop like i'm i'm upset with you why are you putting the baby like he would use the baby as manipulation like i swear he would send a million pictures of like him and the baby and stuff when i'm upset he would like really do stuff like that one night okay he would talk so much smack about the the baby mama the wife right like a lot like to the point where i just wouldn't believe him because i'm like Bro, like, or I would just be like, stop telling me, like, wh I, what do you want me to do about it? Like, I, 
what do you want me to do about it? So that day when we went and picked up the baby or whatever, I'm not going to say the exact details of this man, even not against my will, because I was more than happy to help out, but he literally even just dumped the baby with me when I like had me babysitting. And he was out doing God knows what. And he left his car at the house and he was out with his homie. And I was just like, like i mean i took care of the baby as if it was mine because that's an innocent child i would never like and honestly i mean i enjoyed the time because i wanted a baby and everything but i was just like i was just calling him like hey man like you gotta come back like because now I'm babysitting a baby and my, my my son was with his dad, but the baby would cry. Like I got roommates, I got a landlord. People are gonna be like, what is a, what are you doing with a baby here? Like, I just, this is, I'm, I'm trying to explain, like this is the stuff that I was going through. So it's not really just that easy to leave when like he's doing stuff like that because I'm, so yeah, so that happened and then, okay, so like I said, it was a bunch of things that happened. But now, so here's the first time where he really, he really showed his ass. Like he really, he, now, like I said, we didn't stay together for long. It was only a month. So imagine it's all this chaos stuff. He's snatching me up. He's always doing all this. And he wasn't, he wasn't able to like, uh like be fake no more like he couldn't hold in his anger no more like he just his true self like his full true self was coming out now so okay i remember one time there's probably incidents before this too and if i remember i'll put them but okay there's this one time i got drunk um and i was at the house and i got drunk and I was cleaning up the room. Duh, duh, duh. I look under the bed and I see a used condom. But I'm drunk, right? So I'm like, so I immediately start gaslighting myself because that's what he would do to me. So I immediately start gaslighting myself. I'm like, is that a condom? Is that a condom under the bed? Like, and I'm drunk and I smoke too. So I'm like, tripping i'm like i i get it and i throw it away but i take a picture of it first and send it to him and i'm cussing him out bah, 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 bah. Da, 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 yeah bah, bah, bah. and now i start calling now i just i was going ham right and like so i'm doing all that cussing him out but in my mind i'm like no way like i'm tripping i'm like he didn't bring up in here and i'm like did we use a condom? Like, but I'm like, we don't use condoms. So I'm like, how did it get there? Like, how did it get there? So I'm like, did it fall out his pants one night? Did he have, like stick it in his pants and then the used condom fell out? Like, I was just so confused. Like, and, and the way it was placed under the bed, like, it was in a certain spot to where it was like kind of far under the bed. So you couldn't have just dropped it or like maybe he dropped it and while I was there. So he kicked it under the bed so I couldn't see and then he forgot about it. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just like, okay, obviously it's from him. But like, how did he get here? Because there's no way he could have even brought a female in there. He ain't have no key. So it's like, I know that wasn't it. But like I said, I'm assuming he shoved it in his pocket and it came out. Or now, hindsight, now that I'm thinking back on it, I believe that an option could have been he put it there because he used to like to do this. I think he just used to like to test the limits and see how far he could go because he had already did so much, you know? And I'm not saying that he didn't cheat in it probably. It probably was a real used condom, okay? Like, it probably was. But he may have planted it there is what I'm saying because... 
when I told him about it, he was just, he was not shocked. He just kind of laughed and was like, I want to do nothing that stupid. Or like, I'm not that stupid. And I'm like, so you're kind of admitting that you're cheating. You're just not that stupid to leave a condom. Like, so like I said, I'm drunk. So I call him. And I'm like cussing him out, calling him all type of bees, F you, bop, 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 get the hell out, don't you come back here. So he said, bet. That's what we always used to do. We used to talk smack to each other, bop, bop, be like, bet, 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 bet. It would always be, bet, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? So then that's when he started, bet, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? I'm like, I'm at home, somewhere where you can't be. Da -da -bop -bop -bop. So he pulls up, skirt, skirt, quickly, quickly. He pulls up quickly, okay? And uh, yeah, so he pulls up. We're outside. This time it's broad daylight. It's like, it is 5 p.m. or something, 4 p.m., maybe even 3 p.m. I don't know. I just remember it was daylight, okay? And he wouldn't really snatch me up outside or in front of people to do so when we were outside and arguing when he pulled up and i'm drunk so you know you're more confident when you're drunk too i'm very confident that i'm the one who's gonna be like yeah bye 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 leave leave get your stuff and leave don't ever come back oh no 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 that's not how that played out mm -mm. he pulled up he did not care that broad daylight outside he snatched me up so quick he was like bitch I ain't going nowhere. And I told you that she wasn't mine. I told you that, right? Like, he was like, I will beat the shit out of you out here. Like, you, who who are you calling a bitch? Bop, bop, bop. Like, wow. And I'm like, oh, cool. like, uh. And he was like, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. And you you better sober up or da, da, da. You act stupid when you're drunk. Bop, bop, bop. Like, blaming me. Like, blaming me. Like, this is your fault. You're just drunk. You're dumb and you're drunk, right? So yeah, he. I think I may have been in this robe too, <laughs> but um, yeah, snatched me up, did all that, threatened me, blah blah blah. I was like, I'ma be back, and you better open this fuck door. And another thing he would do, he had a boop boop boop, bop, 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 right. So he would like to plant seeds. I don't know if he ever did this or not, but he would tell me like, oh yeah, like. With my exes, like, I didn't set my cousins on them before, but, 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 so go, if you want to mess with me. He's also said, like, I've, um, you know, my BM's house before, but, but my other ex who gave me everything also said this. So I don't know if this is, like, the type of things that these men say just to scare you, which I'm probably sure they do. They like to plant seeds to scare you. So he would used to say stuff like that all the time, right? And so I'm believing it because I'm like, he is insane. Like, he is insane. So yeah, of course, I'm believing it because, yeah. So um, he did all that, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm going to be back. And you better open this door. You better open this door or else. Or else. And I was like, <laughs> like, just wanted him to let me go. Like, so I was just like. <laughs> yes like like a child like yes okay so i went back in the house and he left did whatever he was doing and i just i cried i drank more i cried i smoked i cried <laughs> and so then um so now so now he comes, he came home, right? And so that night he came home, I'm still drunk. And I remember I didn't want to have sex with him because of what I seen. And also I was drunk and I did not feel good. I thought I was gonna like for real, for real. Cause I didn't drink a lot at that time. I was drinking because I was depressed over him, you know? So when he came, I, um, and this is the thing too, living with him, he would, like I said, uh, controlling, do all that. But now, since I'm living with him, he was. He was forcing me to have sex anytime he wanted, 
forcing me to give him anytime he wanted. And if I didn't, he would scare me. He would use intimidation. Like, I've used the word grape before. Okay, take the G out. And you know what that means. I would say, like, you pretty much grape me. Like, you know I don't want to and you make me. And he would just be like, that's what you would call that? Don't you want to? Don't you love me? Da -da -da -da. And I'm like... You're, that's not what I'm saying though. Like in the moments, you know, I don't want to like, and he will force me, he will force me. So, so yeah, that night when I was drunk, he, um, I don't want to say exactly what he did. But it was disgusting. Like, that night, I was, you know, I was drunk. So, like, everything was a blur. But I, when I slept, like, this is how I knew, like, he is a demon. Because, like, I don't know. Truths, like, my, I, my intuition has always been on point. Intuition always been on point. Well, <laughs> that sounds crazy in this story, right? But... Yeah, but so when I went to sleep that night in my dream, I seen what happened. I seen what he did. And the next morning when I woke up, I confronted him about it. And at first he laughed. No, no, no. Mm -mm. No. And I wouldn't let it go because I felt... I was like, you did this, you did that. Like, why would you do that to me? I willingly have sex with you. Like, why'd you do that? Like, and he just kept denying and denying and denying. And then finally, I got him to admit like, okay, yeah, I did that. And so once he finally admitted to that, and when he admitted that this is the next day, we're laying in bed, the next night actually, we're laying in bed, we're spooning. Um, and he's the big spoon, I'm the little spoon. <laughs> like, so, and he finally was like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Cause I wouldn't let it go. So then once he finally admitted that, I was like, okay, now I'm gonna get him to admit about the condoms. And so we're literally spooning. He's like trying to fall asleep. And I remember I was just kept saying, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. Like I was literally became like a broken record in that moment. Like, I, I don't know, I was just stuck. Like my brain was stuck. And I just kept saying, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. I made him so upset because I kept saying that. He got so upset that as we were spooning, he flipped me over, like flipped me over, got on top of me and was like, I don't remember the exact words he said, but was like, Bitch, I, like shut the, I'm like I told you. And like, all I see is this, boom. He cocked his hand back. And I remember I'm like, like like that but I'm looking and I remember he cocked his arm back and like he like he thought about it I could tell in that moment it was like a split sec a split second it was like a like he he kind of he, he he thought about it and instead of thinking and saying like no don't do this I think what he thought is don't hit her too hard to leave a mark like, let's test the waters. Let's see how hard you can hit her in the face this first time. Let's see if you can get away with punching her in the face. Like, let's test these waters. I could tell in that split second when he... So, he punched me in my face. But I only got my lip busted on the inside. So, you couldn't see that. 
So he busted my lip on the inside and after he punched me in my face, he immediately start. And he got some big hands just choking me out, like choking me out bad. He was choking me out bad. And I started kicking, but he was on top of me. So my legs weren't kicking him because my legs are here. He's on top of me like, you know, I'm laying and he's on top of me, choking me. And I'm just like, <sighs> like trying to yell. I couldn't yell because he was choking me so tight. Like it hurt so bad. I was just kicking and like, I don't know what, I don't know exactly what made him stop, but he just threw me to the floor and he tried to leave and like an idiot my like okay so this isn't the first time I've been that's happened to me and what I've noticed that what I do is like a trauma response is like I said I suppress things right so in that exact moment that he did that and then tried to leave I wouldn't want him to leave because then I would have to sit with the reality of what just happened by myself and I wouldn't be able to deny it. But to me, if he stayed and we just cuddled and went back to sleep, I could suppress that memory and act like it didn't happen. And that is terrible. I wish that I wasn't like that. But before I could even think, I, I just started begging him, please don't go, please don't go, please don't. Like, you can't leave me. Like, I was trying to make him feel bad. Like, like what you just did to me. I need you to be it. Like, I need someone here. You can't leave me. Like, and I didn't want to be by myself. Like, just thinking of the monster I was in love with and thinking of everything that was happening, everything that happened, like my brain was like not ready to to deal with it. My brain was like, no, mm -mm, we're gonna suppress this, like. And so that's what I did. That's the first time that he punched me and choked me out and I suppressed it. And the next day I just, tried to act like nothing happened. I'm at work. When I talk, you could see the, that my lip was busted and like purple, like bruised. You could talk. So, you know, at school, I mean, you could see when I talked. So as I worked at a school. So um, the next day, like my coworkers could see it. So, you know, I was close with some coworkers. They're my friends. So they're asking me like, Rena, what is going on? Like, what happened? Are you okay? And I'm just like, no, like, we just, we're fine, like, you know? And also, one of my closest, or a couple of them, like, they knew that, they knew how toxic our relationship was, so nobody, like, I don't know, no one could stop me, no, everyone knew that, like, they, but they would just, I don't know. They would just be concerned. And I would just feel so bad and embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed at where I was and ashamed that I, I couldn't leave. Because I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate him. I feel like I'm addicted to him. I hate myself for that. And I'm not coping well. The things I'm doing to cope are terrible. So, um, yeah, that was the first time that he had punched me and choked me out because of the things that I caught him doing. And so now after this, it just became, I, I just, it just, everything became miserable. I hated myself and I hated him, but I loved him. And it just became, I was just exhausted. I was just 
like at this point I was like, okay, clearly that's not okay. But like, it was one time and you know, it was heated, it was bad. Like, I don't know, I just tried to suppress it. I just thought it was like a one-time thing. Like, it's not gonna get worse. You know, and also this was him. I don't know. Like I said, I felt like a dog at this point and he would discipline me. And so he would make, like I said, I, now, now I'm scared to question him. Now I'm scared. I'm scared. And I'm even more scared because I felt like I loved him and I didn't want to leave. And that's a scary scary place to be when you are with someone that you know can hurt you will hurt you mentally physically sexually spiritually he was hurting me on all those levels and i was too scared to leave now now i'm too scared to even try to make him leave like but since it was the first time that he had did that, I just suppressed it and I was like, this is gonna work. Like, no, 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 no. Like, I just, I felt like I was in delusional at that point. Like, I was so scared that I just was trying to have faith that things would get better. Cause I felt stuck. Felt like my back was up against the wall. What what am I gonna do? I have nowhere to go. I can't leave. He knows where I live. He I know he won't leave me alone when I try to make him leave. Like I'm telling you, I would lock him out. He would sleep outside. You would think that that would make somebody so upset that they would leave you. No. It made him so upset that he was like, oh, I'ma train this. She gonna learn not to lock me out. She gonna learn not to question me. She gonna learn to move by my program. You know what I mean? And he was, he was doing that. And he was planting seeds in my head that would make me fearful of him. Um, and now, so now at this point, the is getting more involved in how he's doing this intimidation. And so I'm gonna leave it at that for the next story time. <laughs>